everybody. Now, the fourth Sunday of Easter is designated as Good Shepherd Sunday, so we naturally home in on vocations to the priestly ministry and consecrated life when that day comes round every year. Today, in the Western world, there's a shortage of vocations. Not so in other parts of the world. When I was in Poland recently, the seminary near where we were staying was full. But it is mainly in the Western world where the situation is worrying. Today, the idea of a lifelong commitment to any way of life, let alone priesthood or consecrated life, is out of kilter with present day thinking. For many, it seems quite unrealistic. That, combined with much smaller families, has a definite bearing on vocation shortage. I would say that the vocation strain has mostly to do with pushing God and the things of God to the sidelines of our present-day secular culture. Sigmund Freud, the founder of psychoanalysis a hundred years ago, enlightened us about certain unhealthy forms of repression which he believed cast a shadow over people's lives. Today, however, we have repressed the sense of God and of the transcendent. Those with a purely secularist agenda often hold sway over government policy and also exert a big influence over the media and education in general. Pope Emeritus Benedict said the following, Faith in God, the domain of spirituality, is banished from everyday life or marginalised. Our spiritual side has been repressed. This is the new neurosis of our time. This is our deep wound. The neurosis of our time is our silence regarding God, the retired Pope said. Now, vocations, as we know, tend to dry up in more affluent societies. So many superficial attractions for youth in our modern world only serve to distract the attention away from the spiritual. Church vocations don't come out of a vacuum. We haven't enough stillness and quiet in our lives to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. We can only hear the call of God if the spiritual dimension of our lives has been nurtured. So the crisis in vocations in the West is basically a crisis of belief. Now, contrary to what a large number of people think, the rule of celibacy has very little to do with vocation shortage. If Catholic priests were allowed to marry, I believe their ministry would come across more as a job or a career choice than a vocation, and they would be far less effective. Like the Good Shepherd, the Good Priest lays down his life for his sheep. Married people also have a shepherding role in laying down their lives for each other and their families. St. Paul has told us that you cannot combine spiritual fatherhood of the family of God with the fatherhood of a natural family. And of course, if there were married priests, there would be no shortage of divorced priests as well, and then we'd be in a right state. That in itself would undermine the Catholic priesthood, just like it does marriage. I also believe we priests are not entirely blameless for the present shortage among our ranks. We have sometimes come across as being rather apologetic and lacklustre about our ministry and thereby done ourselves no favours. Since Vatican II, for instance, I believe the priestly ministry has been downplayed and some even would say that we've all got a ministry in the church, which to a certain extent we have. But that's not an excuse for um, demeaning the priestly ministry. Liturgies are often less than uplifting and homilies ill-prepared and we often don't preach on the gospel. Or we preach a gospel which is comfortable and easy to live where we conveniently leave out the inconvenient. 
Our credibility as clergy then has also been dented, dented somewhat in recent years when some among our ranks, albeit a very small percentage, have muddied the image of the priesthood among many of our contemporaries and there don't seem to be any let up in this. When it comes to vocations, we all need to examine our consciences so that nothing in our way of life or conduct dull the sense of religious vocation among the young. The voice of the Good Shepherd deserves to be heard. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.